Hello, Abel Files, and welcome to another Technique Tuesday video in which we talk about technique on a Tuesday. Someone in the comments requested a video about vibrato, so today, that's what we're talking about. Let's get started. Vibrato is one of those controversial topics that a lot of performers and teachers will have really strong opinions about. Today I'm going to show you some of the main points, but if you learn vibrato a different way, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. So let me know. Now, what is vibrato? Vibrato is just like a shimmering that we add to the sound for expression and beauty. In order to produce a good vibrato, we first need to have control over the straight tone. So we're going to use these three exercises on straight tones to help improve your vibrato. If you can master these three exercises, you will have total control over your expression and beauty of sound. So first a demonstration of vibrato in this excerpt from the Brahms Violin Concerto second movement. Now in this excerpt we use the vibrato to shimmer and show where the line is leading us. Sometimes we're using it to kind of help a crescendo along, and sometimes we're using it to really show the taper and control over the end of the note. And sometimes it helps a long note not seem so uh, stagnant, helps it give it a little bit more life. So before we get into the exercises, make sure you have control over the long tone and we want to make sure that we have a long tone that we're controlling into a nice taper. So I'm going to do the same, so I'm going to do the long tone on a D, because it's really stable. And we're looking for something like this. And we're looking for something like this. Oh, I keep using vibrato. Let me try it just straight. So once you feel very stable and in control over the straight tone, now we're ready to talk about vibrato. Now, a lot of people generate, generate the vibrato in certain mechanical processes, which we'll talk about in a moment. But first, I want to show you the first exercise for practicing your vibrato, even when you don't know how to produce it yet. And the first one I like to use a metronome for. So the idea is we're going to use that straight tone, and we're going to hold it for four counts straight, add vibrato for four counts, and then again straight for four counts and so forth until we get tired of it. 
So even if you're not comfortable with your vibrato yet, try the exercise and try to just imagine the sound you want to hear and produce it naturally. Now when you're trying this exercise, you now when you're trying this exercise out, you want to try different speeds of vibratos, different swells, and kind of really play with the expression that is possible when you're incorporating vibrato into your tone, and then coming back to the straight tone to make sure you have control. Now if you're not comfortable with the mechanics of vibrato, we're going to talk about that right now, but try the exercise first. Make sure you have kind of an oral picture of it before you get started. I think sometimes that's helpful. Now there are two main schools of vibrato. The first one is to make sure you smash that like button below. Just kidding. The first one is to create the vibrato by using your diaphragm. And the way that I teach this one, the way I teach both of them is just with the read alone at first. But the mechanics of this one is to bring the energy from the diaphragm. Now we want to always think about the vibrato as adding intensity of speed which will, allow us to vibrate, which will allow us to vibrate above the pitch and never sag below the pitch. So always think about adding a little bit of energy to the sound versus taking energy away to create the vibrato. And when you're doing that with your you know, lower body, some people say your diaphragm, but it's really like the muscles of the lower body, maybe the ribs or the abdominals, we're gonna puff a little bit more extra air. So I'm thinking about saying ha. Huh. And I'm pumping air from the lower body. So first without the read. Try different speeds. And then with the read alone. And you'll feel that push of the air. And it should change the pitch significantly with the read. When you've mastered that, try different rhythms just like we did for the articulation video, which you can try up there for getting your single tongue really fast, but that'll be in one of these cards. So try different rhythms with your diaphragm. Try. And you can try more of those at home. I find that the lower body or diaphragm vibrato is really hard to control at faster speeds especially, but it does really show the jerk motion of the muscle contraction for vibrato. When that feels easy, you try it on your reed. I'm sorry, you can try it on your oboe. feel the muscles kind of pushing on that one. And that's the first way I actually learned how to do vibrato. But the second way that I learned how to do vibrato, which I liked much better as a student, is what they call throat vibrato. Now, in reality, the vibrato happens somewhere in between. You know, most professionals will say it happens maybe in the upper chest, lower throat. I don't really know. I haven't seen an x-ray of myself doing vibrato. Uh, but I would say it doesn't really happen in the throat or in the lower body. But the throat vibrato is a good way to kind of learn how to do it for the first time. And what we're saying, or the way that I teach it, is to whistle and articulate while you whistle. And if you can't whistle, just pretend to whistle. So we're thinking... And just articulate that whistle. I'll try the same thing in the read. You can try different rhythms, and I think this is a little bit easier to control at faster vibrato speeds, so that when you put it in the oboe, oh, got some water. <laughs> I have a video about how to get water out of your keys that I'll link to in these corners, and I'll just cut to where we have it out. No, 
I'm not sure if the microphone's gonna pick this up, but you can kind of hear when I do the purely throat vibrato, like a clicking sound, like k -k 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 -k. And that's not very attractive at all. So we don't want to use straight throat vibrato when you're actually playing. You want to try to do the vibrato without such a violent muscular slapping in the throat. So let's talk about an exercise that will help you accomplish this. So we want to find an evenness of vibrato when we're moving between notes. So this is the second exercise that will help you with vibrato. And in this exercise, we're going to start with six vibratos per note, five, then four, then three, then two, then one. And we're just going to pick three notes at random, and every day you should pick three different notes. And so I'm going to pick D, C, and A. So first I'll do six vibratos per note. And then I'll do five. And then four. And then three. And then two. And then one. Now we want to put those all together. And the point of this is to make sure your vibrato is consistent between the notes and not starting over. Now remember to use the vibrato in a way that is not creating extraneous noise, either from the whole body moving from the lower note vibrato or the clicking sound from upper throat vibrato. So find a nice relaxed position. Ah, you know. When that feels comfortable, when that feels comfortable, try to pick different notes to challenge yourself, different resistances around the oboe to find a smoothness in your vibrato so you're able to get some taffy between the notes. All right, so now for the third and final exercise is to find a way to make your vibrato sound relaxed. Now, the way that I like to do it is with scales. I like to play a slow scale with plenty of vibrato in different speeds, different varieties, and just pick a note to land on. I'm gonna pick the second scale degree coming down. I'm gonna pick the second scale degree on the way down in a D major scale, so for me that's gonna be an E natural. So being in control and relaxed might involve you moving your body a little bit just to, you know, not get stuck in one position. You just find a way to make your vibrato not feel tense because you're using new muscles to kind of tense up and increase the wind speed, but we want to keep it relaxed. Let's try a different one. Let's try F major and we're going to stop on the fourth scale degree on the way up. When you're playing in a really relaxed way, you get a little bit more vibration out of your reed. You can use a little bit more expression and variety in your wind when you're not so confined by your own muscular tension. So use the vibrato as a way to free up your playing as opposed to constrict it, which is really common. We never want to play with excess tension. And we never want to play without smashing the like button below and subscribing if you haven't already. That does it for this Technique Tuesday video on vibrato. I hope these three exercises help you gain mastery over your oboe technique. As per usual, when in doubt, play beautifully.